All right, today I want to revisit one of the biggest games and greatest gaming controversies of all time, because after nearly six months, while Cyberpunk 2077 has improved, it hasn't gained back very much ground, and the struggles for CD Projekt Red have seemingly only grown. I probably don't have to rehash what the game actually was at launch. I've said it many times, countless others on YouTube have said it as well, and while I myself greatly enjoyed the story and certain choices that were presented, as well as the music, the humor, and the overall city atmosphere in general, it was very obvious that the game offered up two distinctly separate experiences. On the one hand, PC could play a mostly functional product, and on the other, consoles were given something practically unusable. This type of platform divide would always have caused an issue, but it was exacerbated further by the handling of a refund tsunami. CD Projekt Red decided to offload the refund tidal wave onto their platform partners. The solution to a horde of angry gamers demanding that they be refunded was actually a deflection more than anything else, and it was a deflection that wouldn't even necessarily work. Especially in the case of PlayStation and Sony, this was an issue because instead of offering refunds on their side, CD Projekt Red simply stated that unhappy players should utilize Sony's infrastructure instead. Obviously, this went bad. Based on extremely general polling data, which really can't be taken too seriously because it was a public internet poll on my channel, but based on that rudimentary data, I was able to estimate that there could have been a ballpark 2 million refunds for the game, and that type of volume cannot be overstated. More importantly though, much more importantly, in response to this deflection, Sony decided to indefinitely suspend the game from the PlayStation Store, something that nearly six months later remains true. A lot of people expected this to be remedied by a hotfix or a patch a few days later. I myself expected that within a few months at most, there would be a reversal of this decision based on updates and general bug fixing or exploit patches, but nearly six months down the line, there has been no change whatsoever. Here's the problem with that. Sony is a powerhouse in the industry, and losing access to that storefront for a flagship product, it's gonna hurt. For CD Projekt Red, it hasn't just hurt, it's been devastating. In their most recent investor call, it was acknowledged that the year-to-date unit sales for Cyberpunk 2077 are well below 1 million copies, which is shockingly bad for a game that was hyped for years pre-launch. That kind of miss on estimates, analysts had predicted significantly higher metrics, I believe, has an effect on share price. And since the pre-launch highs for CD Projekt Red in the months leading up to Cyberpunk 2077, the company's share price has fallen by over 60%, from a high of 443 Polish Zloty to 169. Speaking of investors, it's been a really rough six months there too. In the aftermath of launch, when the console performance issues were initially discovered, a reality that was deliberately hidden by CD Projekt Red when they mandated that all pre-release reviewers would only be allowed to use pre-recorded footage for their videos and not allowed to display their own content, but when that deliberately obfuscated fact was discovered by the wider public, there were lawsuits. It started with one, then two, then two more, and now moving forward six months, those cases have merged, sort of, into a larger, more centralized lawsuit which could have cross-case verdicts and precedents. These lawsuits are not from gamers or consumers, they're from investors, because in the year preceding the actual launch date, CD Projekt Red executives had said things like, quote, the game runs surprisingly well on consoles, end quote. A statement that could not possibly have been true, since the game literally made AAA history by being stripped from the PlayStation Store owing to its disastrous condition. Among multiple other statements, this contributed to an atmosphere where shareholders believe that they were deliberately misled, which opens the door for some sort of legal recourse. And that is exactly what we are seeing with a multi-case summary set to move forward probably sometime next month, possibly, but really who knows, this kind of stuff moves slowly. Sadly, that's not even the end of it. Early in 2021, about two or three months after the game's initial launch, CD Projekt Red was hacked. During that hack, infiltrators reportedly made off with the source code for a number of their games, including Gwent and Cyberpunk 2077, ultimately selling that source code to the highest bidder online. It's a very interesting story, actually, and reportedly ends with the code being sold for $7 million on the dark web, but when it comes to CD Projekt Red, their servers were also encrypted and ransomed. That encryption caused them significant hardship. Workers ground to a standstill, and the updates for the game were severely disrupted, which only further damaged their stock price, by the way, and exacerbated all existing hardship. Also contained within that leak, though less known and less immediately damaging, was reference to an internal development practice where items and content slated for censorship so that the game could be sold in China were flagged with a Winnie the Pooh tag. In my eyes, that's hilarious, but for domestic Chinese company partnerships, not so much. 
And to do business in China, you need to have a CCP authorized publisher who takes the helm for that region. So we might never know what that caused, but it definitely wasn't a net positive for them. That much is certain. One of the final items from their most recent conference call was an interesting graph titled Stability Improvement, which logged relative crash rates. That's not a typical thing to see as far as I know, and despite a general improvement over time, which has to be acknowledged, it was curious to note that some of the patches seem to have caused a spike in the crash rate, only to fall over time afterward. Since hotfixes are actually included in the chart, I was, and actively am, confused on how that would be possible, I guess, but in the end, at least the stability is noticeably improving. As if all that wasn't enough, CDPR has also been losing high-level staff. In March of 2021, Cyberpunk 2077's senior gameplay designer suddenly quit the company after eight years on the job. That's not a small thing, because high-level turnover like that, in the midst of cybersecurity problems, auctioned source code, ransomware attacks, a product delisted by Sony, massive investor lawsuits, and a stock price collapse, it just adds to the pile. That was also not the only instance of an unexpected resignation, because during May of 2021, the director of Witcher 3 resigned in the wake of colleague bullying allegations, which became a media scandal of its own, and further exacerbated the share price decline. There were game issues, partner issues, investor issues, security issues, and now internal workplace and personnel issues. It's very difficult to think of a more beleaguered company with a harder six-month span of time in recent memory, if ever, and my heart genuinely goes out to all of those who are struggling in that company right now. This was a game that was advertised as the stone-cold revolution on open-world design. This was a game hyped and anticipated for so many years you could have practically lost count, and when it finally did come, the issues were so hard-baked right into the underlying experience, some of them might even be kind of impossible to change. Issues just keep mounting. As recently as yesterday, Bloomberg ran a piece about an activist investor in CD Projekt Red who wants to oust the entire company's leadership team after their supposed blockbuster wiped out half the company's market cap. Nearly the same day, leaked videos of internal bug montages began to circulate online that show developer-made sequences of a nearly endless amount of broken features and visual glitches. In a vacuum, that's not even that bad, because any major video game through years of QA testing will have enough for this times 10, right? It's just a really common thing. You're going to have tons of bugs as you're developing, but the optics at play here are terrible. It seems like this material was gained during the ransomware attack, and now it is alleged, I haven't seen this myself, so take this for what you will, it's alleged that the files stolen have been uploaded online, and access to the folder is being sold for like $10 a pop. At a certain point, I find it impossible not to empathize. It's almost like every single thing that could have possibly gone wrong went wrong, and then some. Yes, there were point-blank lies by executives in the lead-up to launch, which is entirely unacceptable. Yes, the refund response was kind of absurd, and probably contributed largely to Sony's brutal policy these past six months by flat-out denying it from the store. Yes, investors have a right to sue if they feel that the company has flat-out lied to them, but a ransomware attack? synchronized with highly prominent team leaders making their exit soon afterward, or even executives being ousted for interpersonal issues, that's extra. On top of everything else, that's just so much extra. The speculative roadmap, though they didn't really have an official one, but the speculative roadmap for Cyberpunk 2077 has been completely thrown out. Understandably so, let me just set that straight, but still, it's not a good thing to see. DLC information and patches that were supposed to come months ago are nowhere to be found, and for a company that said it will come when it's ready to be in such an obviously terrible position, when that position is so obviously a result of things being rushed, not when they're ready, it doesn't instill confidence, a fact that is reflected by a number of things such as the company's share price. Cyberpunk 2077, over the course of about four years pre-launch, combined with Witcher 3, over the course of many more, propelled CD Projekt Red to the forefront of the consumer advocacy leaderboards, if you will. The common perception here was that this could not possibly be anything other than absolutely amazing, and the result were expectations so high they could never be met, and they were dashed onto the rocks harder than I ever even thought possible. They absolutely can rebuild. Evidence of this can be seen with their customer refund program after the Sony disaster, which they claim processed about 30,000 refund requests in total, but even then, that number does not reflect the far larger metrics on Xbox and PS4, which is where the player base was initially explicitly told to go. The rebuilding process is possible. Just look at Hello Games and No Man's Sky, but it's not gonna be easy. I doubt that they will ever rise to the same heights again, but again, it is possible. 
This kind of thing, and this particular event by itself, will haunt them. It will become, and it already is, honestly, an integrated part of their identity, which can be used by detractors for the rest of their lifespan as a company to decry anything that they try to promote as probably terrible. And that kind of attitude might actually be justified, technically, but it's really sad to see. Because this is by no means the end of CD Projekt Red, and it's not the end of Cyberpunk 2077 either. Looking back after six months at everything that has happened, and that's why it kind of felt like the right time to make this video, it looks bad. It looks really bad. It's one of the worst six-month time frames I've ever seen for a company in this industry, probably in my entire life. But if, and I believe when, personally, they get back up from this, which I think they will, they will be stronger for it. That level of impossibly high faith, like the really delusional faith that no matter what it is, it will change the world for a video game, that will likely never return. But maybe, maybe that's a good thing. In the end, I wish them luck rebuilding what was lost because I believe that there is still more to come from that studio and I want to see what it is. That's it. I wanted to keep this slightly more hopeful than I have been in the past because it feels like the right decision looking back on everything. If you want to support, there are links down below. You can watch my entire content library on Odyssey, which is beneficial to me, and it's a YouTube platform alternative for those who want to check that out. Sign up link down below. There is Locals, $5 a month for the channel, and you get completely ad-free videos. There's another gaming YouTuber to check out, merch, social media, etc., etc., but I'll cut it there and stop rambling. As always, thank you all for watching, and have a nice night.